Hey, it's Nathan with crazymarketing.com, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the ClickFunnels 2.0 page builder. Now, if you've ever used a page builder before or the ClickFunnels Classic page builder, like it's pretty self-explanatory and the concepts remain the same, but I do wanna go over how it works and some advanced settings and features that ClickFunnels 2.0 has, so that way you can build great looking pages and funnels and all that type of stuff. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So first things first, this is what the page builder looks like and you'll have a similar page builder for emails and so you wanna become familiar with this because this is how you'll basically design everything you do within ClickFunnels. So first things, we have sections. So you need to have a section before you can actually start building your page. So we'll go ahead and add a new section. And we have various section sizes. So we have full page, wide, medium, small, extra small, and so on. And so depending on the design of your pages, you may select a different size. But I usually go with full page because you can also make changes to your columns or rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and do full page. And then within each section, you have rows and within the rows you have columns so we have different options here one column two column all the way to six column so depending on what you're trying to you know create you can go ahead and select the appropriate number of columns i'll do three columns just for the sake of this example and then within the columns that's where we're going to go ahead and place your various elements and elements are what you're probably thinking of when you're designing a page so this is your headlines your paragraphs your images your buttons your videos and icons and all this other stuff that you might want to go ahead and insert into your page to make a nice pretty looking page so you can see there are a bunch of elements to go ahead and choose from but i'm going to scroll back up to one of the more general ones so we'll go ahead and throw a headline element in there and you can see right there we have a headline element i'll come over to the next column and i'll go ahead and throw an image in there just for an example of an image and one more element will come over and we'll add a button right there. So it's very easy to add elements to your columns. And if you decide you wanna move something, you can go ahead and click on it and just drag and drop it. So you want it in the second column, you just go ahead and drag it over and you can you know, move things around, drag and drop, editor, and so you can make pages look how you want to have them look. And now of course, every section, row, column, element, all has its own settings as well that you can go ahead and adjust. So let me come back to the section real quick. So we just move our cursor over until we see the green box and we can go ahead and click on settings right here. And so there are a bunch of different settings where you can go ahead and adjust. You know, sky's really the limit here. We got margins, we've got the the background, or I guess they call it the paint section. And this is where we can go ahead and select one of our styles that we created in the style guide. Now I have another video on the style guide, so if you haven't watched that, I'd go check that out. And you can see what I'm talking about right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the lightest background option right there. We have widths, we can go ahead and change the width of our section. So of course I said it at the full page, but if you wanna go ahead and change it, you change your mind, you can go ahead and change it right here. Stickiness means that it would stay at the top or at the bottom upon scroll and padding. We can change our background colors if we want to, or add an image to the background, and we can change the image fit size. We can add a video, border, shadow, corner, etc. So a whole bunch of different options that I'm not gonna go into right now because again, we'd be here for months if I went through all these options. And a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory, so I don't wanna waste your time. I just wanna cover the key things that you might not notice at first glance. And one of those things is this visibility option right here. So as you can see right now, the default is all. So that means that this section right here would show on all devices. However, you might want to create a section that only shows up on desktops or on a mobile device and is unique to the different device somebody might be on. So if we go to desktop only, then if somebody is on a mobile device, so we can switch the view by using these two options right here, we can see that the section automatically hides. So you can have like a unique view per device. So let me click back on this gear icon and we'll do all again. So if I come over and I see what it looks like on mobile and I see what it looks like on desktop and I'm like, hmm, you know, I'd rather have the image higher on desktop than I do on the mobile. I could go ahead and actually clone this section. So I have two sections now and I could go to settings and I could go ahead and have this one be desktop. And then this one right here would only show up on a mobile device. So I'll click mobile right there. So this is the mobile option. So let's come back to desktop. And let's say that I actually want on desktop to have the image first and then the headline. So that's what my desktop version would look like. Whereas on my mobile device, this is what it would look like. So by using those visibility options, you can change how different sections or rows or elements respond depending on the device somebody is using. Now, let me go up to the section settings again. And so that's, 
you know, a bunch of the different options right here. Coming over, we have even more options right here. So you could go ahead and add, anima add animations as well. So if you want things flying around on your pages, you could go ahead and do that. There's also advanced CSS. So if you're familiar with CSS, you could go ahead and add some custom attributes and all sorts of other stuff that are beyond the scope of this video and really my ability to explain. There's also the logic option that we can go ahead and apply. And I've honestly never used this and I don't actually know how it really works. But I'll try and find some more information to it and link it in the description down below. But it's definitely an advanced feature and it's something that exists if you're interested in trying to figure it out. Alrighty, of course, we just saw the option to clone because I cloned this section and I made one for mobile devices. You could also go ahead and click on code and you could add custom CSS or header code or footer code right in here. If you are familiar with any of these different options and you have some coding background or anything like that. Now we could also go ahead and save our section and there's a couple different options here. So we could go ahead and you know name our section and I'm just gonna go ahead and call it example. And we can also organize our sections. So that is nice. So that way, if we create a whole bunch of saved sections, at least we can keep them organized. So I'm going to go ahead and create an exam example folder. And then there's this option right here that says make section, make section universal. So all changes you make to this section update in all instances of the section. So what this means is if you make it universal, if you use this section on another page that you build and then you update the information within the section, like you change the headline or something like that, it's going to change the headline across all pages where you've used the universal section. And so this can be very handy, especially with certain portions of your website, like your header or your footer, where you want the same header and footer across your entire website. And so if you have a universal header and you wanna change a link in the header, you just have to change it in that one universal section and it'll update your whole website. And we cover headers and footers in the themes video. So if you want more information on the universal blocks, check out that video, link in the description down below. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and do example and example and i'm not going to make it a universal section but i'll go ahead and save the section and so there we go and of course finally i could go ahead and delete this section as well like if i don't like it i can delete it now the same concept applies to the rows so i can go ahead and you know do similar things to the row as i did with this section there's different design options visibility options and so on so self-explanatory stuff once you understand how it all works and same thing i can go ahead and clone code save delete and so on and then of course every element has its own unique options as well like the image has its own options because of course i need to go ahead and select an image that I want to go ahead and have. So I have an image gallery here and within the image gallery, I can discover images. So if I wanna use like one of the stock image sites, I could go ahead and make a selection right here, like free pick and I could look for a computer, for example, oh, if I could spell. So I have computer and we'll go ahead and save that image. And then I can go ahead and plop it in there and there's my computer image. And then of course I have different options over here where I could go ahead and set my margin, my text, my fit, all this different information that you could go ahead and configure. And it just takes some clicking around to get used to it. Same concept with the headline over here. I could go ahead and change the headline to be whatever I want. I could go ahead and you know underline some things. I could go ahead and add a link if I wanna go ahead and do that and so on. So it just takes some clicking around to get used to how it all works. Coming over here to button, we can open that up and we can see that there's different options for buttons. So button text and labels and on click. So this is an important function right here with buttons. So you usually a button submits something. So submit order form in this case, but you could also go to a page. So if you wanna to link to a page in your website, you could go ahead and link to a page or you could scroll to sections or you could open a pop-up or close a pop-up and mark complete and so on. So a bunch of different options for buttons that you could go ahead and select. And that's what makes buttons kind of powerful. And for the sake of this example, I wanna go ahead and do open pop-up because I do wanna show you the pop-up feature in this particular video but coming on down here we also have the button styles which i covered in the style guide video and you can see if you click these buttons you see the different styles that you pre-selected already but of course you could also go ahead and override the style with whatever you want so if you want a unique button on this page you can go ahead and create that and you can add icons before and after change visibility and all the normal stuff that you can go ahead and select 
Additionally, with buttons, there are templates. So if you're like, hmm, I don't really like that, let's go with the pill button. You could go ahead and select, you know, a different style if you want, and it gives you a style you can go ahead and use. And if you're like, oh, I don't like that as that at all, you can come back over here and you can select one of your default buttons just like that. So I know I'm going quick and covering a lot and being kind of random, but the point is you just need to play with the page builder and get used to the different settings that come with the various elements and so on. Now over to pop-up real quick. So we can go ahead and show the pop-up. And here we can go ahead and design a pop-up. And so right now we have our button, so it'll pop this pop-up up. So we need to build something. So we'll go ahead and just throw something right here. This is the pop-up. And again, it just works just like a page builder. So we have you know, the headline, we have the row, we have the section and so on. So we could add some form options in here if we want to. So come over here, we'll search for form and we can throw an input. So there's email, we can add another input and we can go ahead and click on it. And we have input type, we can go ahead and change this one to full full name and we actually want the full name above the email address so we have an opt-in form and then of course we need to add a button for the opt-in form so button and then click on it and we can see that it's going to submit the order or the form and so just like that we've created a pop-up opt-in form we could go ahead and save our page and preview our page and we could go ahead and click on this button we see that the pop-up pops up and I can also go ahead and close the pop-up as well. So it looks like the page is working. Let's go back to the editor real quick as there's a few other things I wanna go ahead and point out. And let's go ahead and add another section real quick. And I wanna show you that ClickFunnels did create a bunch of pre-built sections that you could go ahead and add. So there's the header sections right here. There's stacks is what they call them, footers. And you can see down the side, subheaders, testimonials. So if you want to build like a testimonial section, you might want to go down here and see some of the pre-built ones that ClickFunnels already has. And it gives you like a starting point at least. So that way it makes your page building easier and quicker since you're using stuff that's already been pre-built. Now let's go ahead and add another section. We can go to my assets as well, and we can go to save blocks and we can see that block that I saved previously. So if you create blocks that you saved, you can go ahead and load them in, you know, to other pages and so on. Now, of course, I'm basically replicating the same block as up here, but hopefully you get the idea how to use save blocks. Also, you probably saw when I was under my assets, there's the universal blocks. So here's where we could go ahead and include like our footer if we want to. So if we have a custom universal footer block, we could go ahead and throw it in here. And again, I go over headers and footers and universal blocks in more detail in the themes video. So check that video out if you need more information on universal blocks. All right, just a couple more things real quick before we wrap this video up. The next thing I want to show you is layout right here. So if we click on layout, we can see all the different options we have and settings that we did as we were building our page. And I can see that I actually did apply a condition to my section. So there is that. But let's say that we want to change the background of one of our columns. This is how you would go ahead and do that. So let's say the middle column right there, I want to change the, the background. So I'll click here. I can go to settings. And now I can go ahead and change the background of you know a particular column and so i just wanted to point that out real quick if you're trying to get into something to edit some settings and you can't going to the layout feature might let you get where you want to go but it shows you every single element section row column that you have on your page so that way you can decide or select if you want to edit it or not and so hopefully that can be helpful to you and then we've already looked at my assets it's just these blocks that we have the universal blocks or the pre-created blocks that ClickFunnels made and we can go to the save blocks and so on. So we've already basically looked at that, just came to it another way by adding a section and then going through the different assets that we have to choose from. We already talked about pop-ups and we have a style guide video that I already mentioned in this video. So link in the description down below if you need to look at the style guide. Finally, we have settings. So this, we can go ahead and select, you know, a background for our page topography if we want to change the topography for our page make it different than our style guide topography you can go ahead and do that 
You could also add custom code to this particular page. So CSS, or you could go ahead and add JavaScript or HTML in the header or the footer if you wanna do that. Now there is a place that you can go ahead and add like the Facebook pixel code or universal tracking code, like maybe the Google Analytics code across all the pages in your site. And I show you that within the site video. So if you wanna add code across all the pages in your site, well then watch that video and learn how to do that. But if you want code just on this page, you can go ahead and add it through this area right here. Here. And then we also have editor settings. So this is for personal preference. Like if stuff's popping up too quickly or you can't edit your page well, then you could go ahead and adjust this. I've never messed with it. But anyway, it is here if you need to adjust something because something just doesn't feel right. Again, we already talked about switching between desktop and mobile view. And then also there is an undo button, which is very nice. So if you mess something up, you accidentally delete a section and you're like, oh shoot, I deleted the section. You can undo it and there it is back there. You can go ahead and preview if what you've created. So a nice preview. And in order to actually preview, you do need to save it first, I think. So we'll save and then preview. And there we go. So there's my preview of my page and everything looks like I was thinking it would. And once we're all done, we just can come back up here to that hamburger menu and we can back out of here. And now we're back into our workspace and we can proceed doing other cool stuff within our ClickFunnels account. Now, if I didn't cover something you were hoping to see, for example, the order form element, that's because I have a whole nother video on it because it is complex. And I have a whole bunch of other ClickFunnels 2.0 videos that may answer other questions that you have. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I appreciate and search the likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And or please head over to crazyeyemarketing.com for more marketing information. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.